Hello, Gareth here, and this is a 20 minute watercolour sketch of this sea scene. So, this is the original photograph. It's a place in Wales, I think, called Tridor in Anglesey. I've probably got the name wrong, but when I went there, the weather was very changeable, and uh, this was summertime, so. Uh, it was very cold we had to wear coats so uh, it might not be the best place to go and have a nice holiday but this is what we're going to paint it was a beautiful place though and uh, as you can see I warmed it up a lot so uh, I strongly recommend you don't just copy your photographs but you you change things it will also develop your creative your creative abilities as well very important so the very first thing we need to think about and it really is so important is where is the horizon line so in this one the horizon line is low and that means the sky needs to be a bit more interesting so the sky is more important in uh, for example this painting this is a very quick sketch I've made the horizon line high and as a result I've also made the, the sky very simple because I don't really want a complicated sky if it's just going to occupy a small space. So let's get on with it because just 20 minutes right and uh, already I'm behind so my water is dirty so please use clean water. Luckily it doesn't look that bad. So you can draw a line here where your horizon line is going to be. I didn't bother. Pencil lines I think are okay. I have no problem with them. But um, just I don't need to. But I do decide where the horizon line is going to be. So I do know that. I suppose for a beginner it might be a good idea to draw it. Then I'm going to do my sky. So I've wet the paper. Now this area here I want white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just do like a, a rough circle, not a, not a perfect circle, where the white area is going to be. And then just spread this out here. Now I might not have said, but we're just using three brushes and three colors. Now what I'm going to do next is make a thicker mix of this, yellow ochre. And I'm going to do a bit here. As you can see, it's thicker. And with one color, we were already creating different tones. Like that. So keep in my white area. Then get some alizarin crimson. I need to refill that. And it's just pure alizarin crimson. I start from the outside and blend in. And look how beautiful that is. We don't want sometimes to mix in the palette. Sometimes on the paper is better because the colors are more pure. And beautiful and there we go now I want to do some gray clouds so for that I need some of this red some of this blue now this really is the difficult part of the sky because um, we're doing wet in wet here and if the papers too wet these clouds are just going to explode out and we're going to have no shape so I'm trying to make a fairly thick mix not too thick because we don't want these very heavy looking clouds and that's where the that's why it's good to sketch so you get good at doing this kind of stuff before you do all these finished paintings and um, 
and they all fail and you have to throw them away it's very disappointing so it's still quite wet and you have to be careful of this can you see I've splattered the paper with this mix so you can wipe up some of this like that or you can hide them with some clouds okay so now I'm going to do three basic cloud shapes one two three you could say four right so maybe I want to make these clouds a bit more grayer so I've got red and blue this is a purple add a little bit of yellow ochre and all three colors together will make it more grayer more subdued but not too much okay that's nice so here we go we've got one coming down here let's test it's very wet so I just need to give it a little bit more time I think what I could do is I could do the bottom and maybe yeah I want to do the bottom um, a bit fainter so I'm washing out my brush I'm wiping it and so now this mix is just a little bit weaker and I can do this cloud here and the bottom bit of the cloud here there we go so I did a lot of practice of skies on multimedia paper and that's how I got good and confident with them this is good watercolor paper um, it's a Japanese brand so it's not helpful me telling you um, what it is but if you use Saunders and Waterford or Strathmore those should be good um, but multimedia is best for doing lots of brushwork and practice that's where you'll get good let's test this again oh that's a bit better can you see that it's not exploding outwards so as a beginner wet in wet is probably going to be your biggest challenge okay and then we're going to do a cloud here and this bit goes into the white and you get this lovely contrast and that's what you want you want contrast and then just one more here not so significant try and get a cloudy shape now the paints really drying out quickly so and make this edge here quite nice if we can not super nice a bit rough is okay but we want it like not undulating a line okay there we go yeah I think that's nice wash out my brush get my tissue so watercolor painting is very much see to the pants stuff you cannot fiddle you cannot be like taking a long time but anyway um, get the tissue and you fold it up I didn't show you that just fold it so let's open it up fold it in half fold it again fold it again fold it again fold it again and then get a thick edge a hard edge and we're going to wipe out a highlight here we go yeah like I was saying it's very seat to the pants watercolor you can't be like slow some sometimes you can but most of the time with the big stuff and the bold stuff you really got to be uh, quick fairly quick although there are times when then suddenly you have to slow right down because the paper's too wet and you have to wait for it to dry out so that it's that kind of experience but it can actually be quite thrilling you know like it's not simply like with oil painting you can just take your time and take forever with watercolor paper painting the water is is pushing you it's challenging you now the next thing I want to do is I'll maybe fade that off a bit a bit more you'll also find using this tissue a bit of a challenge at first keep at it 
and you will get there eventually now that's a beautiful sky now I'm gonna do some more wiping out of this in a minute and maybe for your first painting you shouldn't do that because it's quite difficult while I'm waiting I'm going to do the beach so I want to leave this area white yeah pure white area and because this is a bit wet this mix I'm going to dab it on the rag use your rag your rag is a break and here we go yeah that's good keep going actually it's a bit too dry so I've got some more paint there yeah that's good and then I want to mix this a bit too much water with a bit of red that's it and then at the bottom let's muck it up a bit so a bit of yellow a bit of this purple get it a bit dirty because we want to add some variety there we go oh didn't intend to do that but there you go this is going to be C here okay and then what you can do hmm I haven't got quite enough variety there that's going to just all look the same when it dries so in a minute I'll go over it with a darker mix at the bottom let's make it real purple just want to add some variety to this beach surface there that's better isn't it I think you can really see what I'm trying to do here at the bottom water is collecting because this pad is slightly tilted I do recommend you tilt your paper a little so just a little um, and what you have to do though is collect the water at the bottom it pulls up at the bottom just collect it and then up here I'm going to try and do this now I just touch it a little oh I'm safe because if it's really wet it's going to take a huge ch chunk of paint away and I don't want that but can you see how I can soften this cloud it looks like the light is hitting it now to be honest this is probably an advanced technique but if you start now you'll get better at it much quicker and it just looks so nice I really hated tissue at first for clouds and now now I love it very simple but lovely technique okay you have to be careful though that and realize the tissue is picking up paint so you can put that right back in there and if you do that just wait until the paper has dried get your hake wet it again and wipe it up with clean tissue and hopefully you'll get rid of it at least most of it but what you do is after it's become dirty then you turn it and get a clean bit and begin again so I do it almost after every stroke unless there's very little paint extremely little paint oh so that's good then at the bottom I'm just gonna spray here oh it hit the clouds as well to stop that happening you can do this put up some protection with some paper now I've hit that I think just perfect it's very difficult to do it's lovely to spray stuff to get texture but often the paint will be too wet or super dry and no, nothing happens but I've managed to hit it just at the right spot completely by chance I have to say okay let's leave that to dry okay everything has dried I got a little bit of um, 
the spray effect, the texture in the clouds, but I'm not too fussed about that. Now before we continue, I just want to say I've got a one brush course for absolute beginners and it's totally free. There'll be a link at the bottom. If you're ready for something more difficult, there is the two brush course with two brushes and two colors. And if you're ready for this level, then I have the three brush course where we use three brushes and three colors. So let's continue. I wanted a bit more variety in this beach. So I'm going to mix a bit of yellow, mostly yellow with a bit of purple. And then I'm going to wipe across. So you could do this on some scrap paper. I'm adding a bit of red to make it a bit warmer. There we go. It just gives it a bit more texture. Okay, then I might just spray it. And then what I'm moving on to next is the C. And for that, I'm using my bamboo brush and just a pure blue. Try and find a clean area. It can be a little, a little dirty. Mixing it with a few other paints is okay, I suppose. And then we need dry brush effect. Now you can do this freehand and that's perfectly fine. But um, today I'm going to show you what you can also do, which is get a ruler and just put it across and it has to be tilted up. And then you can do like this. Now you have to do slightly quick strokes and you probably want to check this out on scrap paper first just to see that um, you are actually going to get a dry brush effect. And I don't like that mark there so get some tissue and get rid of that and the same here. So you can correct with watercolour painting. And there we go. I might just um, do a bit, bit of a darker blue over the top, just in this corner. Once again, bit of variety. doing this freehand but it might not be perfectly straight so bear that in mind okay that will do now turn that back round is everything leveled up oh bring it forward okay so now this edge here is a little hard so I get some tissue while it's a bit wet but not too wet and just I can wipe it off clean tissue there we go that's good now I'm going to paint the buildings at the top here so I want to do this quickly in a very generalized way so the best way to do that I think is to make just a simple purple mix, make a good amount, and then let's paint. Ah, oh, let's use this hate brush. So I'm really going for simple here. So let's go like this. I guess we could have a path coming down. So there we go. If that's a bit tricky, you don't have to bother. And then here we go. Use the thin bit there. Goes up there, maybe a bit down there, slightly undulating. And then 
I'll darken that bottom bit in a minute. Let's just spray. Don't spray at your paper. Spray above it and over. The drops fall down. Now let's do the houses. So let me see. Oh, I'm working against the clock here. Now be careful you don't put your hand into this wet paint at the bottom. that's one house maybe I should do it a bit bigger okay there we go and then um, over here we can have another house it's it's actually a big hotel so let's try and make that quite a big building now the paints drying out very quickly this is especially the case when you're painting on um, wet on dry and here are some chimneys and what I will do is spray over the paper in a minute and then let's have another house but I'm going to make this a slightly different shape so I'm not copying the painting exactly so there we go I seriously need to spray that now as you can see I'm just using all the same colors I mean the same color it's all basically purple and then uh, let's have uh, a house over here try to get these gaps different if they're all the same it really will look terrible okay and then chimney chimney okay so I'm just going to do the bottom thick mix blue red and some yellow ochre and then just going to give some darkness at the bottom and hopefully we'll get a little bit of dry brush if we're lucky and then what I'm going to do next is make these buildings a bit orange on top ah, but quick 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 I have to do some chimneys these chimneys really help um, and I should do some trees but in a minute so get some yellow get some red oh it's a bit dirty and then this is called charging and this is where you drop paint of a different color on top of other paint and this is where the sun's hitting so probably should have added more yellow ochre to this but there you go So the tricky thing here is doing this quickly I might even add a really thick yellowy to this one here right above the Sun that one's really catching the sunlight okay and then at the top I might also do a little bit of orange here little bit of this orange mix and then it's cooling off over here it's good fun hopefully it will it will look quite nice too it's not too bad is it so that's charging and it's a lot of fun 
okay so that's looking pretty good but I do need a few trees so this is tricky you want to splay your brush hairs like that and you want your mix to be fairly thick not too watery so I'll wipe it on here and hopefully we can get a few dry it out try again a few tree shapes there we go hmm that wasn't super successful but good enough okay and uh, over here too let's have a tree shape whoops splay my hairs there we go and um, just want to do this house again because there's still a bit of purple on the top There we go. Okay. And um, leave that for a while and then we'll spray it. Now in the foreground, let's do some rocks. So the rocks basically a kind of purplish mix with maybe a touch of yellow ochre to make it slightly gray because we don't want it too purpley. And then as this dried, let's see not quite so I'm just speeding up the process here really I should leave it to dry okay let's leave it to dry for a minute or two okay so I think it's getting close to being dry I've got some water pooling up here so you want to soak that up with a fairly dry brush because that might give you cauliflowers and you don't want that and I just want to do a thicker mix at the bottom blue red yellow ochre and then just make it a little bit more interesting here this edge Ooh. and here too a nice rough edge Okay. And then I want a few lines going across here. So it's a light purple mix. And they're going to go across here towards the sea. Now you could use a ruler. In fact, let's make it easy. Let's use a ruler. Just like that. And then like that and you can wipe it up if it's a bit too strong soften it and just do a bit more rough edge here makes it a bit more real looking okay so now the rocks in the foreground so here we go We've basically got this kind of lots of rocks here and then a few big ones over here. So maybe the few big ones might be the easiest ones to start off with actually. Oh, might still be a bit wet. I must admit, I'm not a very patient person. I wish I was. Now the real important thing with this is not to overdo it. And it's so easy to overdo it. Now I'm doing this, you want gaps here. Watercolor painting really is about minimalism. OK, 
okay there we go I think that's enough I'm getting my little brush now and just adding a few more little ones It really is all about how little you can get away with. Strange thing to say, but it really is. In fact, yeah, I think that's almost that's almost it. I've probably actually done too much. and just a lot of little ones here and some lovely gaps here like that okay and the last thing we want to do is a figure coming towards us so I'm using my bamboo brush a round brush is perfectly fine and uh, nylon synthetic I think they're great I really don't think you need a sable brush to be honest one day I might change my opinion so I'm doing a kind of grayish mix which means all three colors now it's a bit wet so I'm using my rag and drying it off this is still a bit wet up here ideally you should leave it to dry but I'm painting against the clock now I'm going to put my figure maybe here so his head is going to be here then his body is going to be about here he's coming towards us so I'm leaving a white line here arms coming out like this super simple figure and then I want to dry this out a lot and then dry brush and dry it out again and dry brush the dry brush really makes it look like this is a figure in motion Ooh. hands are very tricky just a little a little dab I don't I don't particularly like that hand so I shouldn't be doing this because it's just a sketch but I'm just going to wipe it off and restate it and be careful of this white paint down here I just smudged a bit Okay, still not mad on that hand. Let's give them a walking stick. Maybe we can cover it up a bit. And um, yeah, that's it. Down here in the rocks, I want to add some of this darker mix just to add a bit of variety here. And again, a bit more variety. And uh, don't really need to do it, but shall we do a little bit of splatter just for learning across, flicking it across. See that? Just a little. It probably will go wrong. And if there's big bits you don't like, just wipe them up. Like that. And that looks like too big a blob there. Oh, but that's quite nice. Okay, 
and then um, what we might do is let me see um, the face of the figure so for this I'm going to get my liner brush I'm going to get some yellow ochre my reds really dirty so I'm going to quickly get some more okay get a bit of this red get a little bit of this yellow really thick mix really really thick wipe it on the rag a bit more yellow okay and I think it's not quite dry so we're just going to risk it there we go amazing what you can do with three colors right now the final thing is I'm going to do um, a reflection of him in the sand now this sand actually looks quite dry so maybe that's not really such a good idea but I just want to show you how to do it so clean water would be better wipe it here and these rocks are still not dry but you should wait until they're dry but I just wet this paper and then the timing is so difficult so I get my liner brush I get a super thick mix of all colors blue and red and uh, yellow ochre wow look at that that's green so add a bit more red and then add a bit more blue so this is really thick now actually a bit it's actually a bit wasteful but okay and then let's just do a touch oh I think it I think it basically dried out oh not quite but just about dried up took too long ah don't like that take that out and then final thing wash out this brush pure water and just sweep across maybe one time clean it on some tissue and repeat oh can't believe it all the um, the whole head came off the brush <laughs> but luckily I've got another liner brush here let's continue wow you really have to be prepared don't you dry that a bit oh there we go and then same here This cheaper liner brush does the job the other one that's broken was quite expensive I think $25 <laughs> okay finished I think just a few little darks here just restate that a bit I'm not sure if this has that much meaning because can't see them that much little bit of dry brush so I'm doing it under some of these little rocks okay uh, oh maybe here and then one final thing you you can do is get your liner brush 
and uh, you can wipe here and you can take out some of the paint and you can make these lovely little highlights I'm doing this super quick now because I'm running I'm, I've probably run actually run out of time I don't want to make them all look the same and you can even use your finger fingernail but it's a bit more difficult but the, and the paint has to be wet so there we go bit of a tricky technique this one oh and uh, just darken up some areas yeah you could mess around with this for ages and have a lot of fun but you have to be careful because so quickly you can overdo it and that's why timing yourself is a good idea that's it I might darken the top of his head because he he's a bit he's disappearing a bit I should let the paint below dry but not not much time and then darken his pants or his trousers yeah and there we go finished so please have a go and happy painting bye for now